What I thought to do is just give you a quick run through on the 10 rules. And I'll break them down into uh, separate sections, just a couple of, se couple of minutes on each. When you're looking at the 10 rules in negotiation, the first thing that you have to be aware of, and I know it can be a little bit, seem a bit of a cheat, but rule number one in everyone's view on negotiation is don't negotiate. And again, that's where the cheat comes from. There's only 10 rules, and rule number one is don't negotiate. What it says is, if you're selling, get the value proposition identified and sell to the value. Sell to the customer's problem, solve the problem, and then ask for the money. No negotiation needed. If you're buying it to the other side of the coin, what you just do is you work out how much you want to spend, what the value to you is, and then tell the supplier how much you want to spend. No negotiation. They can make their own decision. And that's rule number one. Don't negotiate unless you need to. Rule number two in negotiation is quite a careful one. Rule number two is never negotiate with yourself. Everyone has a tendency to lose a bit of confidence when they do go into a negotiation. They're thinking, how much can I get away with? What's the other guy thinking? What should I really be making as an offer? Well, the first thing you do is, if you're selling, lead with your list price. Don't negotiate with yourself, and don't try and round down your offer to make it appear a bit more acceptable to the other party. If you're buying, again, don't negotiate with yourself. Set a figure that you want to spend, might be within your budget, or just might be an expectation. And don't, don't change from it. Go straight on, make that. If you have to make it as a first offer, make it that way. If not, hold back, but don't negotiate with yourself. That's rule number two. Now, rule number three is never, ever, 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 ever accept the first offer. Two reasons. First one is, if you're working with someone who is an instinctive negotiator, they will be keeping something holding back. So the first offer won't be the best one for you. The second reason is, if you're dealing with a professional negotiator, they're not going to try and break rule number two. So they won't be negotiating with themselves already. So the view here is, when you actually see someone make an offer, put on the table, there's always, always a better one behind it. Not necessarily lower money, but a better offer can always be made. So rule number three, never, ever, ever accept the first offer. Now, rule number four can sometimes be a bit confusing, because rule number four is never make the first offer if you can avoid it. The point about this is that if the other guy makes his first offer, he's not going to try and break rule number two, but you're not going to break rule number three and accept it anyway. So you never make the first offer if you can avoid it. Always get the other person to put their stake in the ground, because that might be the best price you're going to see today, but of course we're not going to accept it, so we're going to negotiate further on it. Rule number four, never make the first offer if you can avoid it. Now, rule number five is slightly different, slightly more complex. When we go into any interaction with another party, whether we're buying or selling, we have to be aware that we've got two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. And what we should be aiming to do is use them in that proportion. Sometimes called the 80-20 rule. You use your ears and eyes 80% of the time, and you use your talking muscles 20% of the time. The main reason for this is, while you're talking, you always have the potential to break the other four rules. You could be making, accepting, negotiating with yourself, and even just breaking all the rules. So while you're listening, you've got less chance of breaking any of the rules. So listen more and talk less. What it means is you don't leak any signals to the other person, and you don't give any room for manoeuvre, and you don't break any of the rules. Rule number six. Never give anyone a free gift. Make sure in a negotiation, if someone wants something from you, they work for it, or they give you something in return. Two key reasons you never give anyone anything for free. And by that, I don't just mean discount, I mean information, maybe even cooperation as part of a gift in a negotiation. Never give anyone a free gift. Make sure they work for it, for two reasons. Number one, today's free gift is tomorrow's starting point. So if you happen to give someone a 10% discount, just because you can, on this deal they accept it, next time you get engaged with them and you send them a $1,000 deal on the table, 
in their mind, they're already starting with a 10% discount. So your $1,000 deal is actually $900 to them before they've even started talking to you. The second reason you don't give anyone any free gifts is not only is it today's starting point, but it's an additional extra point that they're looking for after this. So they'll take the 10%, and because you easily gave them 10% last time, they'll want another 10% as a minimum. So you thought you were starting with $1,000 on the table, they are actually now talking about 810. They've got taken their 10% from last time, and they're taking the next 10% as $90 on this one. Never give anyone any free gifts. Rule number seven, slightly more complex. And what it is primarily is, watch the salami. Now, there are two things that happen in a salami. The first one is, you can do it to yourself. Let's say, for example, that we have, um, we're selling a carpet fitting service. And what we have is, obviously, we have the carpet, which is the raw material. We have the fitting, which is four fellas. Then we have all the gripper rods and all the equipment that goes on. And we have the underlay. If you put it all together, and this is a $2,000 deal, what you don't do is salami yourself by telling the other party, well, obviously, $1,500 of this is the, heart of the carpet, $300 is the fitting, $100 is the underlay, and another $100 is for uh, the, fit the fittings and fixtures. You don't salami yourself that way, because the first thing the other guy says is, well, I'll fit it myself, so, I don't, so your $300 is gone. Next thing he says is, well, I'll use the old fittings and fixtures, so I don't need that $100. And then the next thing he says is, I'm not paying $100 for underlay, I can get it $50 elsewhere. And that's before he even starts trying to beat you down on the price of the carpet. So what you thought was a $2,000 deal is now down to a minimum of a starting point of maybe $1,500, $1,600. So don't salami yourself. And then the second thing, don't allow the other person to do it. Give them a total price, tell them what you're going to do, and then make sure that you look at rule number one. Don't negotiate unless you need to. So rule, rule number seven is watch the salami. Rule eight, quite an interesting one. We call it avoid the rookie's regret. Everyone walks away from a deal wondering whether or not they could have got better. I don't care how professional you are, I don't care how good you are. Most people walk away thinking, could I have done better, should I have done better? To avoid the rookie's regret, you have to be able to answer the three trading questions before you close the deal and the three TQ or the three trading questions are number one if I'm about to make a concession to the other party what is it going to cost me so if I'm going to give this person an extra 10 days credit on a million dollar deal and my credit terms what's it actually going to cost me this extra 10 days where it's in his bank not mine second what is it worth to the other guy the 10 days credit might be worth an awful lot to him, or he may be cash rich and it might matter to him. And then the third question we have to ask of the three TQ is, if I know what it's gonna cost me, and if I know what it's worth to the other guy, what do I want in return? Preferably of equal cost to them and equal value to me. So if it's gonna cost him $10 to give me $100 value, I should be aiming to give him something that cost me $10 to give him $100 value. And that's the three TQ. And if you can avoid these bad questions and get the right answers every time, you will avoid the rookie's regret. And that's rule number eight. Rule number nine, always, always avoid the quick deal. Every negotiation that you're gonna be involved in has a, has a time scale and a tempo of its own. You'll recognize this when you're part of it. The thing you have to be aware of is when the other party starts changing the tempo, usually speeding it up, what it means is one or two things. They've either recognised a mistake you've made and they want your name on the paper so that they can enforce that mistake to their advantage, or they've seen an advantage for themselves that you haven't yet valued. And what they want again is they want your name on the paper to their advantage. So whenever you see the other party changing the speed, usually speeding it up, increasing the tempo, trying to close the deal faster. Don't look upon it as a closing uh, deal. It's not a buying signal. What this is, is this is them trying to take advantage of you. 
So what you do is you slow it down, say maybe, and then go back and look at the 3TQ. Try and work out what the real value to them is. And that's rule number nine. Always, always avoid the quick deal. It's never to your advantage. So number 10, the final uh, rule of negotiation, is never tell anyone what your bottom line was. When you close a deal, no matter how friendly you are, no matter how tempting it is to get into a conversation with the other party about how the deal went, never tell them how far you could have got pushed. Even if there was a penny movement, even if there was a one-day movement, never tell them. Because you could change what was a win-win into a perceived lose-win on their part. If they think they could have got an extra day worth of credit, an extra dollar's worth of finance, and you've kept it for yourself, they will see it as a lose. So rule number 10 is never tell them what your bottom line is. Don't tell them before you go in, not during the meeting, and certainly not at the end. So that's the 10th rule of negotiation.